What's going on everyone? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to see how to write a linear relationship in a different form called the general form. The reason that we need to learn how to write these in different ways is because this general form can really help us find out information incredibly quickly, especially when we're substituting in points to find out whether they're on a line or not. The good thing about this is that the only skill we need to know is how to rearrange equations quickly. If you're not 100% sure on how to do that, I've got a video linked in the description below that should be able to help you out with it. There are a few rules that we do need to know in order to make sure that we're getting these exactly correct because the mathematics behind it really isn't too difficult. As long as we're following along this little recipe or step-by-step -step guide, you're going to find it pretty easy. So the general form looks like this. We've got AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. The A, B, and C are just numbers that go with either the X variable or the Y variable. So this is different to our Y is equal to MX plus B because we've moved a, thing, a few things around. And so here we're not trying to change the X and Y. These are still points on that Cartesian plane, but the A, B, and C will change depending on the question. There are three golden rules that come from having this general rule, and if you knock out all three, you're always going to get right. The first thing is that one of the sides, usually the right hand side, is always going to be equal to zero. So if you don't have a zero in your final answer, you know you've got it incorrect. So this is a nice starting point because you just have to vacate all of the information from one side to leave it with nothing. The second thing we have to make sure is that we always have whole numbers. So A, B and C cannot have any fractions. This is quite a lot different to our gradient form where we have y is equal to mx plus b. In that form, we can have a gradient that is two over three, one over two, and that just means that the gradient isn't as steep. But in this form, we have to get rid of that fraction by multiplying the denominator throughout. Finally, just to make sure that all our answers look exactly the same, so we have it in a general formula, we need to make sure that the coefficient with x or the a is always positive. It's not gonna change the equation if we, if we have that as a negative one, but if we multiply it by a negative number to turn it positive, everyone's answer is gonna look exactly the same, which will help us communicate our knowledge more effectively. So you're gonna get questions like this. Convert y is equal to negative four over three x minus six into the general form. All we've got to do here is make sure that we are following those three rules and you're going to find it nice and cruisy. So the first step that we have to do is we've got a plus four over three X and plus six all over to that Y side. I'm going to straight away write it with the X term first, but if you leave that to the last step, that's totally fine. So now I've got four over three X plus Y plus six is equal to zero. So that is my first rule done. I have zero on one side, happy days. The second step is I have to make sure that everything's a whole number. So I've got to get rid of this four over three. So if I multiply every single term by three, I'm going to have four X at the start. So that becomes four X plus three Y plus 18 is all equal to zero. Now I've got all whole numbers with a zero on one side and the a term or the number with x is positive. So this is actually my final answer. So the working out for these questions is not very difficult at all. As long as you can move terms from one side to the other and multiply, multiply through by the denominator of a number, you're gonna be super cruisy. So my big pro tip for this whole topic is to make sure you're looking at the term or the coefficient with the x at the start of the question. If that X term is negative, like we did in that first example, I want you to move the X term so it's positive. So you can plus everything over to that other side. This just makes sure that you're not gonna be left with a negative answer and lose a mark just like that. However, if you've got X as positive or it has a positive gradient to start off, just move the Y over to the other side. This means that there's no confusion as to whether or not you have to times by negative one or not, and it'll just mean that you've got to do way less work. So we're just gonna have a look at one example where this happens. We're gonna have a positive coefficient with the X to start off. If we move that Y over, we're gonna see it's exactly the same, but we're trying to get rid of one step. So for this one, 
I've got 3y is equal to 6 over 7x minus 11. This time, I'm going to keep my x term the exact same. I'm going to leave it on that right-hand side. And I've got a minus 3y over to the other side. Again, I'm going to try and put my y straight into the middle, just so it reads a little bit easier. This means I'm left with 0 is equal to 6 over 7x minus 3y minus 11. Remember, because they're equal, I can just switch them around. It doesn't matter which side you write them on. This is totally fine for now. But for that final answer, let's have the zero on the right-hand side. So here I've got a fraction, obviously, six over seven. So if I multiply every single term here by seven, I can get rid of the fraction and know that I'm gonna have whole numbers the rest of the way. So once I multiply everything by seven, I've got zero is equal to six X minus 21 Y minus 77. Just to make sure I've got the zero on that right-hand side, I'm gonna rewrite it just to make sure that your teacher doesn't think you've made a mistake. And I've got six X minus 21y minus 77 is equal to zero. This fulfills everything that I need, okay? I've got a positive x term there, I've got zero on one side, and I've got whole numbers throughout, so I know I've got this right. So if you graph that first equation we were given in this example, and your answer in general form, the graphs are gonna be exactly the same, because both of these equations give the exact same information. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys later.